Welcome to the Secret of Skinwalker Ranch Review Season 4, Episode 11. This show was filled with experiments and I feel like interesting approaches to provoking the phenomenon. Don't you think, Jimmy? It was a great show. It was a great show. Can I do a couple of spoiler alerts at the front? Well, this whole show is going to be filled with spoilers. So, yes, right. definitely. Fast forward the, past the first 20 minutes. But the last 10 minutes of the show... Man, right? Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't fast forward. Just 15 minutes. If you <laughs> fast forward. <laughs> now, is it, and and what did you make of? Let's just go straight into the spoilers. Beginning of the show, you got Jay Stratton and his team shows up, and we'll go through that in just a minute. And then we get a guy showing up with uh, a giant. Tesla coil, right? And which was pretty cool, actually. But so, and I'm like, all right, okay, all right. Next up, we got a guy who shows up with a giant flamethrower that's going to shoot a hundred foot flame. Right? So we got, we got Jay Stratton. I don't know what that's going to involve. We've got uh, a, a giant Tesla coil Martian plasma beam weapon. That thing looked really cool, straight out of Mars Attacks. And and a flamethrower. So what, what, what did you make? That, that was a strange setup for the show, wasn't it? Because you know we're going to have fireworks. We're going to have rocket launches. You know, we've, we've got Tesla coil plasma beam Martian incinerators. And we've got a hundred foot flamethrower. Uh, what, what went through your mind uh, at, uh, for that kind of setup for the show? Uh, Mike, I couldn't have said it better. He says you can never go wrong with a flamethrower as part of your scientific experiment. Got that right. Oh yeah. Oh, but I was all in. I was all in. I just was. I was like, "What? Okay, all right. Let's have some fun." And then on top of that, with the super cool flamethrower, which this episode, while it was filled with experiments, it was boys with their toys. But also, they mentioned wormholes, or what some people would classify them as portals. And my ears got so big, they got so inflated, and I was like, this is now officially the best episode. Um, because as many of you know, when it comes to portals, that's what I'm all about. That's what I love so much. And yes, that is my bias right there. All right. I'll admit it. I have no problem admitting that. But it, it was interesting that they mentioned that. I don't want to get too ahead of myself. So let's kind of start off from the beginning and then make our way down for this episode because sure. there was a lot that happened. There were a lot of people that came on the ranch this week. And I'm going to share my screen here so we can kind of get into that with the people that arrived for these experiments. There it is. Okay, so first we have Burnett Anderson, part of Photron Cameras. We've seen him in the last several weeks where he has high-speed cameras and he takes pictures while these experiments are taking place. There's also David Mason, the technologist and inventor, and he brought several cameras for infrared and thermal imaging. But then we had two new characters or uh, guests, and one of them was this person right here, Nathan Whitehead, a part of the company Throw Flame. The guy <laughs> providing the flamethrower. And then we had Cameron Price right here. Uh, Prince, excuse me, who was the Tesla coil engineer. That was his title when they brought him on the show. And this, I felt like, was a really cool power team. I'm really happy that they brought in Photron cameras to, because we've been saying, look, we really need to have someone consistently there that has a high-speed camera to take pictures of things that our eyes cannot see. So I'm really, really glad that this has been a consistent theme the last few weeks. Then we have David Mason on again. I believe this is the third week he's been on the show. Um, yep. He's just kind of there when it comes to the aspect of production, but I bet when he was actually at the ranch, because filming was last year, uh, he probably provided a lot more insights than what we were able to see, at least for the audience. But then we have these two new characters. Again, sorry, excuse me, guests. I, I say characters because it's a TV show to me. Please yeah, excuse me. And, and but I mean to say guests. It's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. But, uh, flamethrower um, and plasma. There's the plasma-wielding Martian incinerator gun. Which it um, looks so cool. So cool. 
I have my own Tesla coil. I showed it to you. Should, should I show everybody? Go look, ahead. Look, 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 look. Psh, psh. You can listen to it. Listen. Yeah, it's so high pitch. It sounds actually terrible. Okay, there but... you go. That's a I mine's a little scaled down version of 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 that thing right there, which is actually very, very cool. Oscar says he wants one. A Tesla coil or what Jimmy has. But also that was another person that was all on the ranch, but that was only on screen for just a few seconds. And that was Don Mitchell, the fire marshal, because, because they are playing with a flamethrower, they need to bring in a fire marshal. I'm really happy that they took those precautions. We because hundred foot flamethrower. Oh yeah. Man, when that thing fired up. Okay. Let's not get ahead of our skis, but, <laughs> but, but I had a real, um, uh, Sunday go to meeting moment when I saw that thing fire up. That thing was no joke. No, it was pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Okay, so so that's the team. Uh, what's next? Jordan, thank you so much. Hey guys, love listening to you two on my home on my way home from work. Awesome. Thank you for giving us an absolutely amazing review of a secret of Skinwalker Ranch seasons. Love you guys. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, Jordan. Jordan. Yeah. Right so getting that. into uh, these guys showing off their equipment, I mean, I bet all the guys were like, this is the coolest thing ever. And again, I don't blame them because that is pretty awesome. And then they go ahead and as night begins to fall, they begin to conduct their experiments. The reason to why they brought a Tesla coil engineer and an expert in flamethrowers is to provoke the phenomenon. So they went ahead and they went to the center of the triangle, which is where it's believed to um, have a lot of strange things happen in that area. But also at about the 30 feet mark, there's something there. Have it be a portal or an object that is cloaked or just something weird. These are theories that have been thrown amongst the team consistently in the last few seasons. And so they're because, continuing. Well, well, let me let me let me jump in though, uh, briefly. 31 feet something strange happens 31 feet. That's the height. If so, uh, that was the focus of the show. Let's do a bunch of stuff boys with their toys, as you said, at 31 feet. And let's see if we can provoke something. Exactly. So that was the reason to why they brought these people on. And there's another team that we're going to mention a little bit later. That was also at the triangle, but this first group, they have all their equipment out. They are on these box. Bo what are these called? Uh, lifts. Lifts. Thank you. They're on these lifts to get at that 30 foot feet mark ish and then see what they can do. So they first bring on the Tesla coil with Cameron. Uh, you can see that right here i know it's not amazing but here's the tent and then here is the cameron doing the experiment and they had mentioned that there was nothing odd the the light sparks they weren't acting or reacting in any strange way everything looked normal now to keep in mind while these experiments were taking place uh eric had mentioned that they had they were monitoring all of this using their standard kit, which includes their spectral analyzer, trifield meters, GPS loggers. And then, of course, during this time, during these experiments, at least a second time around, they were also launching rockets, which, of course, you have to do. But Cameron had mentioned, again, the guy with the Tesla coil mentioned, we're going to transmit electrical energy into the air. It is an air cord transformer that produces lightning, uh, like as if it's discharging. The idea is to see if this can provoke or illuminate the phenomenon, which I found really interesting. So not only did they want to see what would happen uh, if they were to bring something like this, but also to see with this intense energy to see if anything would come forward as well. And I was like, huh, okay, I can dig that. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's just called science. Right. right? Let's, 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 let's try a variety of things and, and, and see if we can, uh, you know, not only get the reaction or, or something at 31 feet, uh, but, you know, try to get it to replicate. And that's that's the whole purpose of this. I got I, I, I was down with it. 
Right. And then they had to bring in the second experiment of the flamethrower. And I, when you watch the episode, as soon as the flame was was going off, everyone that was in the tent, their smiles were from ear to ear. They were so excited seeing this. And if I you were know, in that same you know, situation, I would be You know smiling. they can feel the heat. Right. Eric had mentioned saying, I can feel the heat from here. And they absolutely. were pretty far away. Yeah, absolutely. That that thing was no joke. That's, oh. uh, that's only a piece of it right here in this shot, by the way. This <laughs> this thing was, um, it, it was crazy. It was a lot of fun to see, um, to see that happen. I didn't get... Uh, they were sold out. I didn't get my Elon Musk uh, flamethrower kit. Um, I wanted one, and they they sold out. Um, but otherwise, I I'd, I'd be doing that myself uh, with the Elon Musk uh, flamethrower. But yeah, I think I think everybody wants one of those things. Well, there uh, you can buy them on this website, Throw Flame, for about thirty four um, hundred dollars. So if you have that kind of dough, and, and if you want one. You can, you can you get can one. Get, you can get that flamethrower for you can three get grand. That flamethrower. Oh yeah. man. Yep, yep. I just looked it up before the show started, oh, uh, which was which was interesting. Man. Oh, mm -hmm. my next sky watch is going to be illuminating. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> okay, with okay. this experiment, what caught people's attention? While they didn't see anything in the moment, what was captured with the high speed cameras was this curvature. So you see the flame on top and on the bottom as if it's avoiding something in the middle. And Bernat, the guy of Photron Camera, said, you need to look at this. I don't know what's going on, but you guys need to see this. Does this look weird to you? Now, Nathan, the, the person that was there for Throw Flame, had mentioned this typically doesn't happen now he used that word carefully typically he never said this has never happened before as many people do when they go on the ranch he said this doesn't i don't typically see this type of thing and why am i bringing that up it's really important because they a few days later they bring the data to the command center so it's eric travis thomas and a few others at the command center and Travis takes another look at this and he says, maybe, just maybe it has a mundane explanation where it comes to, in a sense, air currents, like how what happens with a tornado. Is that a possibility? Because this experiment wasn't conducted more than once, at least from the audience's understanding, we don't know for sure. But let Oh, we lost you, Christina. We lost you, Christina. I'll pick it up from here. Um, oh, you're back. Are you back? Oh, I, I don't know where I left off. Okay. You left off with um, they didn't repeat it okay, twice so, that we know of. Thank you. So they didn't repeat this experiment twice to the audience's knowledge, which is, you know, disappointing. But did they? We, again, we don't know. But what I would like to mention, which I was really happy with, Jimmy, is that we don't often hear them looking at data and then thinking of a mundane explanation or even like debunking themselves, saying like, well, you know what, now that I look at it, maybe it's not high strangeness. And I feel like that adds a lot of validity to this show or even other shows that are conducting experiments where something looks really wild at first. But then when they take a closer look, they say, you know what, now that I think about it, it might have a mundane explanation. And that's something that I was, honestly, I was really joyful to hear that um, when it happened in the command center. Like, okay, cool. Uh, I feel like that should be the mentality. Questioning everything, being skeptical, and thinking of the mundane explanations before we take a big step forward in getting into the strange and to the mysterious. Yes. And then, of course, well, I'm just going to say it. So Travis, of you know, of course, he jumps up and sees something and he's got a UAP, right? <laughs> Travis has got UAP radar, man. He can he can spot something uh, very, very quickly. Um, I'm not so sure um, in this case now. 
um, we we don't know. Um, could this be some be, you know something way in the background? Um, could it be something natural? Could it be a bird? Could it be something else? Um, uh, we we don't know. Um, it's a flamethrower going off. Um, is it is it an artifact from that? D is there something flying away from it because of the heat? Um, you know something. I, uh, now, is it extraterrestrial? Is it UAP? Is it some anomaly tied to the triangle and thirty one feet and all of that? Possibly, don't know. But uh, I, I kind of expected this to happen, and it did, and it happened right on cue. It was uh, really, really interesting to see um, Travis capturing something so small with his naked eye and say, hold on, back it up. Let's see that. And as Eric is going frame through frame, he notices this object. We don't know what it is. Therefore, we're going to classify it as a UFO because that's what it means. And it was going towards uh, the flame, but they were doing the frames backward. And it looked like it came in from the corner and then coming in forward. Could it be a mundane explanation? Sure. It could have been a bug. It could have been a bird. We don't know. We don't know the distance it was at. There are an infinite amount of explanations that it could have been. But could it have been something really strange in the sense of something anomalous because they were at the triangle provoking something to happen? This isn't the first time that something like this has occurred where they're doing experiments in and around the triangle and they see a UFO. So as you had mentioned, it was it wasn't incredibly. It was interesting to see that come forward. Now I wish we were to go, were able to get more analysis on this, but for the time being, it's still in that box of mystery. Yeah, and and so there's your first 20 minutes. Okay, so now let's get to the good stuff because the crazy the they could have done 2 hours of the next 10 minutes of the show which was a mind-blowing uh, revelation, uh, at least for me personally, um, seeing what was revealed. Now, um, there's there's Jay Stratton and his team. Um, let's, um, uh, they fired a rocket. They did uh, some uh, some imaging of that. And okay, okay, that that was cool too as well. I don't know if we'll have time to get uh, circle back to that. But um, let can you cut to the picture of the air with the black splotch? Well, and we're getting no, we're we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves because this this company that the team that Skinwalker Ranch team brought was Omnitech, and what was really interesting about the people that were brought onto the ranch, this team for Omnitech, they all have a military background. But Travis had mentioned, he says, what the team that you brought is really interesting uh, because they, these people in their line of work, when the time that they worked for the military, they were looking for signals that are jammed, hidden, or spoofed, and then figuring out what the useful information is. And with Omnitech, it is dealing with AI and gathering that data using AI and regular brains and then going from there. Now, I did go onto their website. And it says here, our story. In 2010, Omnitech was established by USAF General Lance W. Lord as a forward-thinking company that specializes in delivering mission-critical solutions to both commercial and government customers. Among our customers are the DOD, NASA, the intelligence community, and a variety of civilian agencies. And it says our mission by combining artificial intelligence and, ma and machine learning with human intelligence, we can address our greatest challenges. This powerful combination provides decision makers with information on events before they happen, enabling them to predict and prepare for potential scenarios rather than merely reacting to them. This proactive approach can help us to tackle the most significant issues of our time and mitigate risks before they become crises. I thought the team that 
the ranch brought Omnitech was a really, really interesting choice. And people can make up their own minds on what they think about this. But these were people that have a really extensive background. And as Travis had mentioned, these are people that in their line of work, they looked for really weird signals and trying to figure out what to do with them, which is very, uh, I would say, important or crucial when it comes to Skinwalker Ranch. I was like, huh, I like where you're going with this, guys. This is sounds it's getting really, really good. But just like with almost everyone else that visits the ranch, their equipment wasn't cooperating with them. And it's uh, so when they got set up, the reason why um, uh, I wanted to jump ahead and show the black uh, uh, an anomaly. What, uh, don't do that yet. Uh, just stay. Oh, uh, right, there it is. OK, she's she did it. Thank you, Christina. You didn't have to do that. Um, but ultimately, this image here and I'm going to explain and then we have to go backwards. Um, but, uh, this is picking up reflections returns. Okay. So stuff on the ground, just like a radar is picking up the reflection of a plane or an object as it passes over. That is what is happening here. But at the center of this, there is nothing reflecting. And this is a large area. The little blue splotch that you see at the uh, 10 o'clock position uh, in the upper left, that's the tent area uh, where they're set up with their computers and stuff. But what is interesting here is obviously you have a black spot in the center that is returning nothing. Kind of like, I'm going to say it, a stealth aircraft. A stealth aircraft doesn't have a radar signature, and that's what's happening here with this LIDAR. But what you do have is this red ring, this red circle around it, and the red is the highest return rate of a signature, and it's a perfect circle. What is doing that? It, it, it's weird because when you see it in the high and, and, and the full color image of the area. It's just, it's, it's just Skinwalker Ranch with buildings and, and dirt and shrubs. There's nothing uh, with a circular shape like this. And then the green area in the middle, which is a medium reflection, right? You're going to get a return, but look at the perfect circle that is there and clearly defined between the green and the red area. You can see the yellow uh, section separating it. Very, very interesting. And this kind of imagery, this is LIDAR, right? This is ground detecting radar. And if uh, if you're not getting a return in the middle, is, is that uh, an error in the equipment? Is there a problem with the software? Is it, I, I, okay, we could chalk it up to that maybe, but you combine it with everything else in this image and that black hole, right, whatever that is in the middle without a return at all, is at the center of this red circle with the highest return rate. So this to me is one of the most interesting images uh, that I have seen yet of Skinwalker. Um, very hard to explain. It is. And you're right. A stealth aircraft deflects, minimizes, and bends the waves so there's only a tiny return. But in this case, with the black hole there, or as what they classify as the void, something completely absorbed the waves. So there was zero reflection. And that's was something that not only caught my attention, but that caught the team's attention in the aspects of where they had mentioned, this is really, really weird. And then Thomas Winterton says, it's like a black hole. Now, I don't know if he was referring to like a literal black hole, like in the image, or if he was referring to a traversable black hole. When Thomas had said that, Travis and Eric were going into the more scientific aspect and saying, oh my gosh, what if it's a traversable black hole? And then Eric says, I'm imagining it as two funnels, which if, if you look at um, the Einstein-Rosen bridge, 
it's it's that same kind of shape. It's skinny in the middle, and then it has two a, a wide input and a wide output. And I was like, this is what I'm here for. This is what I want to hear all day, every day. This is so exciting to me. But this isn't the first time that this has been mentioned when it comes to the ranch. It's been mentioned in Legends and Lore when retired Navajo Ranger John Dover was there and he saw the hieroglyphs that were depicted by the natives and they showed the swirl. It was referring to a portal. And then there are many other rumors regarding portals during the Bigelow era. It was allegedly mentioned that scientists had saw a different landscape when they when they saw through a portal in the sky it was like a totally different environment um mm -hmm. john dover had mentioned stories allegedly hearing of bigfoot coming through a portal at skinwalker ranch the team has mentioned portals uh previously i think last season and earlier this season as well right. this isn't anything new but i feel like they are getting closer and closer to finding out at least hopefully what is going on there and if it is a portal what does that mean for humanity what does that mean for our technological advancements because when we look for anything that's really what we're trying to find is how is it going to benefit us yeah this is a this is a this is a tough one to explain um, especially when you know what's in the image. The red is the highest return rate. Remember, a stealth aircraft, stealth fighter, right? Pick one, F-22, F-117, F-35, doesn't matter. Pick one. Um, stealth, uh, the bomber, the B-2, um, is that it, it takes the radar and it scatters it, right? It doesn't allow it to return back to its point. That's its job. And so that's what you're seeing here. So the red circle, everybody, that is giving the highest return rate. Whatever it is on the ground is giving the highest return rate back to the LIDAR. In the center, that black splotch ain't got nothing. And uh, it looks like... Um, We've lost uh, Christina again. So while we're waiting for Christina to come back, um, I I'll say this. This image was after all of their equipment started to fail. So what they, they were setting up uh, for the ISS, and they were tracking the ISS. ISS is uh, about to pass directly over Skinwalker. There's plenty of software uh, to do that with. I have it. I have ISS tracking software and I get pretty excited when the ISS flies over. I get a notification on my phone. I can run outside, especially at night. It is really cool to watch. And you've got, uh, Travis said 10 minutes. It seems to me like you've got two or three minutes of, of good visible time when the ISS passes over, but they are, we've got Christina back. We've got Christina back. She's putting on her headphones. She is ready to go. She is smiling. So, Christina, um, you were probably listening. Were you listening to me? Was I doing a good job? Yes. Was I, was I making you proud? Okay. Of so let's let's. So um, while they are prepping, right? They know ISS is coming. They're outside. They've got all of their tracking stuff set up. They've got a drone that they're getting ready to launch. Um, the team is there. It's go time. Here comes the ISS. ISS starts to fly over. Um, they pick up the ISS radio transmission signals, which was pretty cool. Um, they get the 1.6 uh, uh, gigahertz hertz signal. That fires up. And then everything shuts down. That's right. And what was interesting uh, for me is that uh, all of this happened at the same time. Now, do we... Uh, okay, it, it's like high strangeness once again. The, the drone won't fire up. It won't launch. All of the computer screens go blank, right? All of the data collection stops. Every, everybody's standing around. Meanwhile, you've got the ISS passing overhead. They're going to miss this moment 
of uh, 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 you know the the experiment. Now, where do we go with mundane here? Is it coincidence that it's the ISS flying over? Is there something directly involved with the ISS? The 1.6, the signal transmission dropping, GPS stopped working, the drone wouldn't fire up, and the computer systems crashed all at the same time. Now, was this done by dramatic effect? You know, we weren't there. What was the timing of all of this? Was it minutes apart, seconds apart, or was it what appeared to be, you know, like everything happened at the same time? But Definitely high strangeness. What did you think, Christina, when when all systems went kaput? I think it's more likely that there was something up there invisible and maybe blocking the area of space over the ranch. I think that is also a possibility as well. Um, it is something that's really weird. They also ended up capturing the 1.6 gigahertz as well. But between this, this potential object that was blocking the signal is between the ground and the International Space Station. And I was like, well, that is... I just found it really, really odd. Android, thank you so much. It says blind, uh, blind, mind blowing episode. I cannot wait to see the faces of the science community and Skinwalker debunkers when a TV show proves a wormhole before them. Heck yeah. yeah I, I, I kind of like blind mowing show. That was pretty. <laughs> See, because because I put I put mind and I, I made it into one word and it just it didn't sound good. So no, we got to fix great. that up. It sounded great. It sounded great. It it was, it was a bind mowing show. <laughs> it was. Um, but, but then, yeah, but Jimmy. I mean, also also the the spectral shadow was the was like the black blob on the uh, laser map or I like the, the lack of, of spectral as well, yeah. which was uh, really yeah. interesting. And also for those listening to this, if you're enjoying this review so far, make sure to hit the like button. We have 200 people watching this live about a little under a hundred likes. If you're enjoying what you're hearing hit the like button. Yeah. Hit the like button. I don't have the tally up in front of me. Otherwise I'd be, uh, posting numbers like this and and say you know what's wrong everybody but but uh, I don't have that up right now it's just I'm focused on the show I'm focused on the last 10 minutes of this show right it was one of those things where um even for me Christina I am always looking for you know, I, I I need to keep my head clear. Right. It, I, I need to keep it clear. When you see stuff like this, you just want to jump down the rabbit hole. Of you just want to go straight there. And the last 10 minutes of the show, um, I, I couldn't come up for air. I was I was completely blown away. That that LIDAR image is I think is so significant. Um, um, this was the rocket launch imaging here. Um, showing the scatter around the the rocket launch. This was actually pretty interesting too. How the lidar data um, uh, uh, spread out away from the rocket. You would expect it to be uh, the opposite. But I don't know much about lidar. Um, it's radar. You know, it's looking for reflections uh, to come back and return to it. Um, but this was uh, this was pretty interesting too, as well. It was because what the rocket launch, what OmniTech was expecting, was that the 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 signal points to be very very close, very very concise, right? But when they were reviewing the data, they noticed that the signal points were incredibly spread out, more so than what would be expected. But the second time they did the rocket launch, lidar didn't even capture it didn't capture any of the signal points. And that was really weird because that shouldn't have happened. That should yeah, not have I, happened, but it I, did. I, I don't know enough about LIDAR. I, I don't, or radar. I'm not that kind of technician. I can look at the imaging and, and, and be confused by it and surprised and impressed. 
Um, they expected a straight line, but the data was spread. Yeah, see, that to me makes sense. I would expect, uh, you know, that that rocket to have a direct reflection back, right? That you would see uh, the shape of the rocket and and the 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 fuel, the fire, the flame, the engine. You would see something, and and you don't. Now there may be an explanation for that. There's a lidar expert out there that can say, well, this is diffracting, and and it's because of this and that. Okay. I would love to hear, but the LIDAR professionals that are operating this equipment, they were the ones that were surprised by what they captured. So I kind of have to go with that for now. I don't have enough information, but uh, I expected the opposite. I thought I was going to see a rocket launch, and we didn't. Overall, it was a really, really great episode filled with the scientific experiments that so many of us usually want to see. And I feel like people must have been satisfied. I, I really liked it. I really liked the teams that they brought on for this episode. It was really, really interesting, informative, and they came across data that I think shocked a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't love a, a, a good flamethrower? It was a great episode. That last 10 minutes, like I said, they could have done two hours on the data and what was presented in that last 10 minutes. It was absolutely mind-blowing. Christina, another great review. Uh, here we are, season four, episode 11. How many episodes are left? Three. That's it? That's, that's it for what the are we season. Gonna what, are we gonna, what are we going to do for the rest of the summer? Summer's almost over. I, I've got I, I've got a couple of TV shows we can review. Jimmy, thank you so much for doing this review with me. Tomorrow is Mysteries of the History, so you do not want to miss that. What are we doing tomorrow? Are you gonna let me know in the morning? I guess we'll find out tomorrow. <laughs>